everybody, it's Tyler here at Riverbots High School, checking in with 252H, holy cow, coming in from Ontario this team. Excellent award already, so congratulations on the awesome success they've had uh, for this. But a lot of great stuff, you gotta take a look. I mean, not only is this a multicolor sensation going on here, but overall, this team has been number one. Uh, we're ranked number one through the end of day one, which is phenomenal. But a lot of great stuff we talking about with this. Modifications to the Lady Brown, some of their front intake as we go through. We're talking about some of their future plans, potentially for a tier three climb in a unique fashion that we haven't heard of from you before. It's a lot of great stuff to learn about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Awesome, let's break down this robot a bit more, starting with your drivetrain. Talk to me more about what you're rocking. So for our drivetrain, we removed our middle wheels. In our previous versions of our robot, we used to have tracking wheels. And right now, um, fast wall stakes is the meta. So uh, we removed them because when we had the tracking wheels, it will take longer to align. And uh, when we removed them, it made our robot faster at aligning with the wall stakes. So with going for wheels, you obviously have to go omni wheels for that, right? So you don't scrub or anything like that. Have you noticed like, you know, there's a lot of defense being played on wall stakes. Do you guys have any complications with that? Like trying to score anything? But I mean, you guys are number one seed, so it's kind of hard to, to blame on that. But have you seen any tough defense against that? Uh, yeah. So walk me through like match strategy wise, like how do you guys like compensate and try to get around teams or do you, how do you try to score as quick as you do? Um, so we would try to move around the other team and try scoring before they can reach us. Fair enough. Uh, Jaden on here, let's talk about the uh, mobile goal uh, clamp that you have and then go into more about your first stage uh, intake. You guys have been so quick at just everything in your cycles. So walk me through what you got. All right, so for our mogul, we have a, a, a high strength axle here for the mogul to um, sit on. And then here we have our polycar funneling. This funneling is really good for aligning the mogul. And so like it's like once you drive in, it basically automatically aligns. And for our, uh, for our mogul, it has a, it has a vertical piston which uh, has two screws and a and a spacer at the bottom. This spacer pushes the mogul down and this holds it in place, so it's a perfect angle. Um, before we used to have a lever design, but we switched it to this because this generates more power and torque. Um, now I'm gonna talk about the first stage. For our first stage, um, our, um, our, our mounting is really far back here. This is, um, so like um, when, when we're scoring wall stakes and like when other robots are ramming us, it's like, um, it's more strong. We also box this out channel, like which also increased the durability of the robot. We have um, we have a two-stage um, um, intake ramp. So the first stage is so so like the rings um, pop up from the corner, and this also helps align um, like um, make it go up more. Um, here we have a row of flex wheels, and it's chained to the um, conveyor. Here we have polycarb and it's rubber band tension um, to, so it goes up. This allows the, um, the robot to pick up rings from any kind of field, no matter how bumpy it is. So you guys have a couple of events under your belt so far. From uh, your first stage area, were there any major changes between events? Uh, yeah, so for our first stage, it wasn't as smooth as this one. Like this one's pretty smooth. It was more like one big fold. So like this is way better for the ring as it like smoothly goes up. And for our intake, because we're using a Lady Brown, we chained it together. Before, it used to use a 5.5 watt motor. So like this allows it to be much faster and like more, more consistent. Anyway, let's talk about that uh, second stage with the hooks uh, as you go through on there. Um, and then as well, too, we talked about the Lady Brown. Love to hear more about uh, just some of the changes from the standard Lady Brown that you made and just how it all works. Yeah, OK. So let's start off by talking about our hooks. So our hooks in the first stage of our intake run at 600 RPM. And the reason why we chose this is because we want the fastest cycle time possible. And as you can see down here, um, our bottom flex wheels are the two inch ones and our top flex wheels are the three inch ones. Due to the fact that um, with the less torque you have, uh, the smaller diameter gives you like a more violent flip, but you also lose torque at the same time. So we decided to use the three inch wheels so that we could have a cleaner flip on the ring and score better. And so we will uh, demo the arm now. So most of the teams now are using a standard Lady Brown arm. But what makes this arm different is that this arm is able to go 360 degrees without going out of size. So 
This allows you to pull mobile goals out of positive corners if the team isn't holding it properly. And with the aligners we have, these triangle aligners, they allow us to pull the top ring off of any mogul just by putting the arm up and pulling the mogul back. So from some future plans when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that you are looking at adding a climber, potentially a tier three as well too. Uh, love to hear more about how you plan on doing that because when we talked earlier, I mean, so many teams are looking at doing either the outside area or trying to just climb the rungs. What are you guys looking at doing and how are you looking at accomplishing it? Yeah, so um, we we have started researching. Uh, so obviously we researched like climbing from the sides and climbing from the angles, but we decided we want to start thinking about climbing from the inside because the main problem with climbing on the corner right now is that your claw has to be so thin, or like so exact, and you can't really mesh it with any other uh, mechanism. So the idea from climbing in the inside is that you can still have a wide claw and it's easy to climb from the inside. And you can also like score the uh, top ring stake without having to like climb from the outside. Also, it's harder for uh, people to defend you if you're climbing from the inside due to there being like your ladders protecting you basically. Yeah, it's funny because when we talked to a couple other teams, they said, hey, like, if you're going to go to multi-stage climb, like, you might have to give up the Lady Brown for things like that, too. So it's cool that you guys are thinking about ways you can still keep that yeah. as well. I'm excited to see uh, what you come up with in future plans for that. And also speaking about that, Alex, uh, talk to me about uh, from autonomous standpoint, what are you looking at improving from your autonomous modes uh, as you look at future events, too? So one thing with our autonomous that we want to improve is that we want to make our tracking wheels better so we want to look to maybe implement 2.75 inch omni wheels instead of the two inch ones we are currently using because the two inch ones they aren't exactly circular you can see like they're more like octagonal shaped kind of so if we use the larger wheels we can get better arcs and therefore we'll have a more accurate autonomous and additionally we want to we want to implement more pure pursuit into our code as right now, we mostly just use motion chaining, which is good, but Pure Pursuit, it's a lot better at correcting itself as you put a ton of points on the field and then it just keeps chasing the points. Yeah, helping out a bit more with your localization that way, right? Yeah. Get a bit more accuracy on it for sure. Uh, so first of all, like I mentioned, as we're filming this, you guys are number one seed uh, currently in your division. So we wish you best of luck going into day two. Obviously looking for big things as well. But once again, this is uh, 252 uh, and congrats on a great run and good luck throughout the rest of the time. Thanks guys. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected.